In this module, our previous talk continues. Uh, we are talking about uh, position in discourse, in communication, in talk. And this time, we'll see how grammar fixes our position in talk. And this is very interesting thing to know for the students of language. In grammar of some languages, like European languages, except English, and Asian languages, uh, in which our own languages are also included, more than one second person is used. And you are very well aware of that. In Urdu, we use Aap for seniors, for elders, and for equals and friends, we use Tum or Tu. So we have two second persons here. One for seniors, elders, and one for juniors and equal. English, Old English, it too had two second persons, thou and you. Thou for familiars and equals, and you for superiors and for elders and seniors. But gradually with the passage of time, you know languages change. So what happened? It remains only with you. English remains with you, and thou uh, goes out of talk. It is used only for God these days, and that's why in translations of religious books like Quran and Bible, etc., you will find thou for God. It is used for familiars, and it is used here in these holy books just to show closeness with God. Otherwise, we use for all other purposes, you, for juniors, for seniors, for both. So actually, there is one second person in English. In Urdu, two second person. But in imperatives in English language, please is added to show respect. Uh, before imperative, please uh, have a seat or at the end, have a seat, please. In many cultures, these linguistic choices are ritualized, as I said in some previous talk, that sometimes uh, it is uh, our culture uh, which uh, requires us to show respect, to use these uh, uh, seniors, uh, to use different second persons for seniors. So this is our cultural requirement. It is ritual. And in this case, this is not show of power, right? But the gender equality and egalitarian, uh, to think all people equal, socially equal, uh, this is called egalitarianism, egalitarian. And uh, gender equality uh, these days, you know, uh, we say that men and women are the same as far as uh, their duties and responsibilities, etc., are concerned. Okay, so because of these uh, two conceptions in society, which are very common, things like this, uh, the element of power, it has to some extent reduced. Because with the use of these persons, second persons, we attach the element of power. So it is reduced talk. Even bilinguals, when you talk in two languages, what happens? Uh, you are talking in one language and then you switch over to the other language. So researchers have found that we, uh, if in one language we use only you, but uh, we when switch over to a language like Urdu where we have two second persons, so we adopt two second persons in that language. The discourse participants are, if we divide participants in a discourse, in a talk, so one is speaker, another is addressee, and other is the person that is spoken of. 
in urdu we say uh, uh, the uh, person uh, who uh, in, uh, we say mutakallam and mukhatib uh, or we say uh, wahid ghaib so like that in japanese speakers are bound to raise the addressee and lower themselves whenever they talk about the addressee they enhance the person's honor by using uh, things like madam sir and uh, by eulogizing praising that person etc etc and uh, for using uh, uh, expressions like uh, my humble opinion uh, things like that so that the addressee should feel honored and elevated even when they talk about persons who are somehow linked with the addressee they enhance them uh, for example when they talk about their wives their elders their relatives so they would use the same they would show the same kind of respect for them this norm is essential part of women's language in japan hence gender discourse position right but in some cases women can reverse the norm are totally opt out of it it shows their power if women don't do that when they talk with the addressee they enhance themselves and lower the status of the addressee so in that case they show power so we conclude from these examples that it is not women's language a lack of says rather the system of hierarchy as you have seen uh, in the example of japan the system of hierarchy that is maintained by patriarchy uh, that uh, men are higher in status or position uh, than women so like that so hierarchy also shows social distance one person is superior the other person is uh, you say inferior or junior so it is actually this hierarchy this social distance that is maintained by the culture by the society that creates your position different position in discourse it is not gender it is not your uh, sorry it is not your language that creates difference it is the hierarchy that is part of your culture that creates difference in your position in talk in every context respect is not a matter of power as i told you in case of uh, uh, the respect that we are bound to show that is ritualized in our society whenever you talk with elders you say assalamu alaikum you have to do that and showing this kind of uh, respect uh, is not associated with power so relating language with uh, directly with power is not a valid point